Uh, myself, my husband, John, and then we have four boys, Nathan, Jack, Patrick, and Finn. So Finn's first seizure was at uh, five months old, and it was ironically his christening, and we had had a cold in the house, and um, like a normal infant, we gave him a little bit of Tylenol, and he was napping, and my sister was excited to go get him as a newborn, and she was really happy to be up there, and then she called us upstairs, and he had started with what we now know is a hemoclonic where just his wrist was shaking. Um, and over the course of time, it started to get worse. Um, and that first one lasted over 70 minutes with a lot of intervention. Um, and he was a little baby, so it was, it was hard. Um, well, following up that episode, we actually got a misdiagnosis. So they thought he had HMPV meningitis because I guess there was some marker in, a, in his spinal tap that came back. Positive. So we were in the hospital for three weeks that first go around with an intravenous um, medication called a cyclovir. So every eight hours they were giving that to him. Um, and I was still nursing at the time. Once we were released, they thought everything would be fine. Don't worry about it. This probably will never happen again. They gave us some rescue meds just in case. And he was okay for about two and a half months. And then I'll never forget it. It was Columbus Day. So as a teacher, I was home and he had another one. Um, and so we went back to the hospital and they just said, oh, he has an ear infection. And so they said, well, sometimes kids that have a severe seizure or febrile seizure when they're younger are more susceptible. So that's probably all this is and everything's fine. Um, and then from that moment on, he had a seizure every 10 days. And so it took us until about four and a half months later to do genetic testing where I think they started to wonder what was going on but never told us what their thoughts were. Um, and it wasn't until February, right before he turned one, that we got his genetic results back. And they said he's positive for Dravet syndrome. Um, we're in a rough period right now, but he adores music and Disney movies and his brothers. Um, and he loves to dance. He's nonverbal, so his singing is not really words, but he makes these sounds that he sings along with his music. Um, he loves being outdoors and he loves swimming. Uh, over the summer, we had a perforated appendix and we didn't know for quite some time because again, he's nonverbal, so he couldn't tell us. And so by the time they diagnosed it, he was about six days into his appendix leaking. And so they didn't feel comfortable taking it out at that time. And we had to stay in the hospital on intravenous antibiotics. And through all of that, um, we actually had our first seizure freedom in two years. So we have seizures every day in a normal life. And when he was on these antibiotics, for some reason they stopped. So even though we were in the hospital for this terrible thing and he was um, asleep for six days and on a feeding tube and all this stuff, all of a sudden he wasn't having seizures. So we were pretty amazed. Uh, we went home and tried to keep up some of the things that they had done, some changes that they made while we were inpatient to make his Dravet syndrome life a little bit easier while he was inpatient. And so we kept those up and then his seizures came back terribly. Um, and in all of that, he's lost some weight. And so that affects his diet management and his liver kind of stopped absorbing his meds. And so his seizure control, even though we were having them every day, they were predictable and we knew what they were like and everything kind of changed again. So then we were upping meds and then, um, we were back in the hospital three more times because we could not control his seizures at all. And then we had his surgery and then they got worse. And then that was at the end of August. Um, so we've been waiting to heal. And as he's healing, his liver started working again. So then he was over medicated and taking down seizure meds can be really hard. Um, but he's also refusing foods right now. So for a child that lost eight pounds, refusing foods has become a big problem for us. Um, so he has struggled eating. He doesn't like to eat. And so eating is a battle and it causes a lot of stress and frustration for him. And because he can't tell us, I think it adds to his level of frustration. Um, 
because he's on the ketogenic diet, his medication has become a battle also. And now that he's bigger, because he's almost seven, there's a lot of pushback. So med time can be stressful sometimes because we are pinning him and trying to get meds in him that help him. Um, he does go to school, but he takes a bus. His school is about 40 minutes away, so it's a little bit of a drive because it's a therapeutic school. So he is on the bus with a nurse, and he falls asleep on the bus because he's really tired, so then they have to wake him up when he gets to school. He has a good a good program at school, but I know, I'm not sure they're ready to like push him to eat and do other things, and they've seen some decline in him. So that's, I think, hard. And then he comes home on the bus and he falls asleep. So when he gets off the bus, it's hard because he wants to stay asleep, but we have home therapy that comes pretty sh soon after. So then we're waking him up and he's quite angry about that. Um, we've got some self-injurious behaviors going on right now. So he shows his frustration by banging his head on things that are around him or himself or us or whatever it might be. So I think he's got some frustrations there. <laughs> and then he works hard every afternoon um, with his home therapy. And so that can be more tiring for him. And then he has dinner and fighting. We fight for dinner a lot. And then he goes to bed. And um, that's his calmest time of the day, I guess. He loves going to bed. Uh, now that he's older, um, the hardest part is managing how difficult his day-to-day -day is with trying to maintain a normal life for the rest of our children. And trying to still do typical things that we'd love to do as a family while managing what Finn needs. And sometimes that can be really, really hard. Um, and either we can kind of not do that stuff or have idealistic hopes that things will go smooth and then they don't and then you kind of end up in a sad place because things didn't go as you thought they were. And then there's the other part of just trying to make the best decisions for him, especially like right now in this difficult time, that can help him have the best life that he can have. And we're constantly second guessing that.